tonight on 8 out of 10 cats. From Tattoo Fixers, it's Paisley Billings. Laugh Yourself Silly, it's Josh Jones. And Rob Beckett, their team captain. And facing them tonight, getting a great reception, it's Tom Reed Wilson. She's a stand-up gal. It's Gary Pritchard McClay and Catherine Ryan, their team captain. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Cobb. Hello and welcome to Editor 10 Counts, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 66% of the human body is made up of water, unless that human body is your mum's, in which case, it's biscuits. <laughs> 3% of the UK think they have superpowers. I have a superpower. I can levitate. Well, not completely, just my tinkle. <laughs> Only when I'm looking at other tinkles. <laughs> and toilets use up to 35% of your home's total water consumption. That's why, to save water, I go to the toilet in the shower. Although it can be tricky pushing it through the plug hole. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. Tonight, it's our palace job to guess the most memorable things about school. Rob's team, what do you remember about school? Oh, well, the teachers. Do you have any great teachers? Was there anyone that stood out? Not really. All I really remember from school is really wanting pubes. <laughs> <laughs> I just, like, I was 13, is in PE, that was all pubed up. I was like, I've never wanted pubes more. Oh. Now I've got them, don't know what to do with them all. <laughs> <laughs> You've got pubes, yeah? Um, one. <laughs> <laughs> one really yeah. long one. Yeah, last week I ran downstairs. Mum, look, it's happening! <laughs> yeah. uh, what were your teachers, uh, Paisley? Some of them were all right, I guess, but a few of them didn't like me. One in particular, because I did used to spend quite a lot of time on the phone. And then uh, this teacher caught me on my phone and I was put in inclusion for the rest of the week. So basically they lock you up in a room at the top of the English block with like a supply teacher or like a, like a, what are they called? Pedo. People that help. <laughs> <laughs> people that help you. <laughs> Teaching assistant. <laughs> Honestly, I had to eat my lunch up there and everything. It was really sad. I feel sad for teachers now because they're not allowed to discipline anyone. If I was a teacher now, I'd be fired day one. And any type of abuse that happens to your child at the hands of another child, they'll never tell you which child it was because they don't want vigilanteism. <laughs> but I know it was Marianne. And I just start flirting with their dads to break up their family. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go straight to the child. You just want to be like, hey, Hannah. Are you going to be nice today? How'd you like to spend every other weekend on the M25? <laughs> <laughs> You're about to have two Christmases, bitch. <laughs> 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 I used to love it when you see a teacher outside of school. Oh. Like, what a thrill. Mm. You know, when you see them, like, in the Morrisons in a fleece and they look all bedraggled, they look like, you know, when they pulled Saddam Hussein out of the ground. <laughs> 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 that way he's moan as well, that, oh, there's so much marking. Oh, there's so much marking. How hard can that be? They know the answers. <laughs> uh, we both went to school in South East London, didn't we, right? And it's, it, you don't learn anything apart from how to know when a fight's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> They never taught us anything that we'd use. They taught us stuff like Spanish and music. Everyone I went to school was a gas fitter. <laughs> <laughs> that one flamenco <laughs> guitarist. <laughs> but none of us had to do our tax returns. We all our own had a G sharp. <laughs> now, each teacher has a different reason for getting into teaching. Take a look. So why do people become teachers? I can only say that I always wanted to be a teacher from being a tiny child. I knew I wanted to teach drama. I wanted to do a job that I would be proud of. Well, I only went into it, first of all, as a sort of a stopgap. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> a stopgap between school and prison. <laughs> do you know the teachers I hated? French teachers. <laughs> shit, it? It's just someone that can speak French, isn't it? <laughs> Teacher, they just speak French at you and go, oh, don't you know it? You're not doing very well, are you? <laughs> well, my grandpa was a French teacher and my <laughs> father was an English teacher and that's how I happened. Because... Your dad fucks his dad. <laughs> 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 wow. My 
maternal grandfather uh, taught at the same school. And sometimes the eldest girls of faculty mm. would date the youngest teachers. So your dad was a teacher there? Yeah. Your mum was a child that was there? Well, she was, she was 18. She 18, was okay. coming of age. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so sometimes a sexual assault in a school can go well. <laughs> He was 16 years her senior. <laughs> he was 34 and she was 18. <laughs> I never really thought about Fine. it. Fine. Yeah, but she's French. Well, she's got French in her. I bet she is. <laughs> Josh, any good teachers at school? Um, no, my teachers hated me cos like, I'm gay, I'm dyslexic and I'm left-handed, so I'm just a, <laughs> like, Catholic teacher's worst nightmare. <laughs> was you naughty? Yeah. I was, like, one of the bad boys. <laughs> you were one of the bad boys? Yeah. <laughs> and people yeah, meet yeah, me now yeah. and think I'm like, ooh, but actually I'm pretty dangerous. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was, like, getting bullied. I started doing boxing for self-defence. And I did boxing for years and I loved it. I loved it so much. And not just because of the skipping, but the... <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> Opposite Joshua, all the teachers loved me, and um, I was really <laughs> popular too. I was in a very exclusive po po clique of one. Yeah, <laughs> um, I was like the kid every other kid hated. I did everything right. I was really smart. I was bilingual, and the teachers wanted to have lunch with me and chat to me. Like I was cool with them only. It was very sad. And then I realized I didn't like that anymore. So I packed that in about 14 and started getting fingered. <laughs> <laughs> What an inspirational story for anyone watching. Uh, let's have a look and see if teachers are up there. Yes, it's teachers. They say those who can do and those who want loads of holidays and to finish work at 3.30, teach. <laughs> OK, so, Catherine's team, what do you think the nation remembers about their school days? Mm, I think they've got to remember school dinners. We're top 20 in obesity here, but now that we don't have the EU butting in, we could go for number one. <laughs> I think the way they should do it now is because there's a lot of obesity at schools, isn't there, right? And oh, yeah. schools are overcrowded. So what they should do is, rather than having a canteen, they just put all the food in the middle of the playground <laughs> and just let them run at it. <laughs> and all the fat ones that can't keep up will lose a bit of weight. <laughs> the skinny poor ones will get a bit bulkier. And then, you know, you may lose a couple of lives along the way, but then smaller classroom sizes. <laughs> you know? I don't see how they can be obese now, because you're not allowed to pack them anything delicious in their lunch. You're not allowed nuts, you're not allowed any chocolate, not allowed any fizzy drinks. But I stopped drinking fizzy drinks at school because I remember that experiment where you had to put a tooth in a glass of Coke and after a week it had vanished. No. Yeah, because it was dead. Oh, yes. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can drink Coke, you'll be all right. They tricked you in that way they take an apple and they roll it around and bruise it and then they take another apple and they don't bruise it and then they tell you to slag off the one apple and be kind to the other apple. Then they cut all the apples in half. And they go, see, your hurtful words have bruised this apple. That's what the fuck are yeah. you <laughs> Well, they don't do that here. What do no. you mean they all bruise in the apple <laughs> and then talk to the apple? It's very normal. You slag off one apple, you're kind to the other apple. You see that those, when you slagged off is bruised, you give your teacher a hand job, you don't go home and tell <laughs> anyone. <laughs> Back to school dinners. I used to have packed lunch because I was a really fussy eater, and then it sort of ended up being a good thing, because once Jamie Oliver took all the good stuff out of the vending machines, like, I still had crisps, chocolate... Did you sell it at a profit? No, I'd, I'd trade, like, my Lunchables, though, because I love cheese. So I'd trade like the the chicken bit for more. Yeah, cheese. That, the meat in a lunchable, you know. Oh yeah, is, the good That bit. is not acceptable. <laughs> it's it's just a pink cheese. square. Yeah. <laughs> the pack lunch is a dangerous game, though, isn't it? Because one wacky choice by your mum, and people see it like your life's over. It's going, all right, brioche boy. <laughs> <laughs> Seven years have gone by, and I remember that one time you had a bit of brioche. You can be in a pub with your kids at thirty-three. Goes, all right, brioche. <laughs> Josh, are you prick? <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what do you remember at school dinners, Kiri? I was part of the generation where we had the turkey twizzler. I miss it. What's that? Yeah. What? It's the best. It's like buttholes and nipples <laughs> in like a, a delicious spiral. <laughs> and it's like sweet and salty and it's so good. And then Jamie Oliver came in and just took out all the good stuff out of school dinners, mm. all gone. Jamie oh. Oliver 
is as like detrimental to turkey dinosaurs as the meteor was to actual dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, what do you remember from school dinners? I just used to smoke. <laughs> <laughs> so you wouldn't eat anything? No, eating's cheating. Like, if you want to look <laughs> big, um, just start smoking at 12. I mean, yeah. I'm 56 now, and um, <laughs> I'm quite happy with our <laughs> lot. What I used to find disconcerting was sweet servers for savoury things. Like, the smash would be served with an ice cream scoop. Yeah. <laughs> that was so incongruous to me. Oh, it yeah. sounds like the kind of school that you went to, like, you would start from the outside with your cutlery and work your way in. <laughs> like, did you go to a fancy school, Tom? Well, my secondary school was. It yeah. was a nautical college, and I had to polish cannons every day. Yeah. <laughs> and I wish it was a euphemism, but it's not. I had a <laughs> microfiber duster and, and a can of Brasso, and if I didn't do it, I had to do a march of shame around the parade ground wow. in my number twos. Which was my uniform. We've got a photo of you from your school days from my private collection. <laughs> oh, wow. that's, Ooh, that's in wow. the marching band with my French horn. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had to learn to blow somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, marching with a French horn is perilous for your teeth. If you're trying to yeah. play Henry Mancini yeah. with an <laughs> instrument that large. That's why I've stayed away from it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still have the hat? <laughs> well, yes, oh, I do. <laughs> this is like Grinder Live. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got the hat? I do love a posh bike. It makes me feel like dead rugged and manly. And like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm the bit of rough. Like I'm just going to come in and sweep his chimney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't Jesus. call it his chimney. <laughs> 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 OK, let's have a look and see if school dinners are up there. <laughs> yes, indeed, it's school dinners. Our dinner ladies at school weren't a great bunch, but there was one Dilf. <laughs> I wouldn't have minded putting a toad in her hole. <laughs> That's it for part one. See you after the break. Welcome back to AI Ten Cats, where we're still trying to guess the most memorable things about school. OK, fingers on buzzers. <laughs> Rob's team. Exams. That was quite stressful at school. Did you do well in your exams? Rob? I didn't do any. Did you not? No, I did. I did do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I, I didn't like it when you had to show you're working. You did maths, oh. show you're working. Why can't I have a hunch? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I've got a foolproof way of, uh, if you're a girl, of cheating at exams. This is what I did. Uh, you write the stuff on your tits that you need. <laughs> you know, like the formulas that you need. Mm. And then you, like, obviously have your, like, polo shirt or whatever done up. And then when you need to do it, you just look down and you see the formulas. <laughs> no teacher is going to be like, show me your tits. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't know the answer, I'd just write a letter to my teacher about how sad it would be if I got trapped in the town. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, please, Mr. Keir, I really hate this city, and you know that I don't belong here, and if I don't pass and get at least a 72, then I will be here, and you will see me in the bars, <laughs> and you will deal with me. And then he did give me exactly a 72. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get away with it, because when I did my exams, I had to be, like, chaperoned by this, like, guy, because I was too naughty. Where? So, <laughs> and oh. also, because I was thick as shit. So... <laughs> So I'd just be doing my exams. But sometimes he'd give me the answer because he wanted to get off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what annoys me is I used to hate it when you had to do that three-hour English exam, right? And you finished after about 45 minutes, yeah. didn't you? You just pretend you're like that. And then they have the cheat to go, OK, one, pens down, who's still fucking <laughs> writing? Who's <laughs> <laughs> writing after three hours? It would be me, cos I, I would use it, cos I had it for attention deficit disorder. And what would happen is about 20 minutes in, I'd see a shuttlecock no. in the roof <laughs> of the gym, <laughs> and that's 45 minutes gone. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got, like... A whole paper to do. <laughs> but how come when you've got ADHD, can you not concentrate on the paper, but there's 45 minutes in a shuttlecock? How come you can focus so deeply? Well, because like the shuttlecock is the leap-off point. Yeah. So you go shuttlecock, and then you're like, why is it shaped like that? And you're like, what's the end made of? Is it nice to bite? And then you're like, do you know what I like biting? <laughs> it's like <laughs> the end of certain jumpers, but not the jumper that I'm wearing right now. Got and it. then you're like, why is it only jumpers that are delicious though? And then you're like, oh my god, it's been 45 minutes. <laughs> 
Well, I can tell you that exams are not one of the most memorable things about school, but remember, if you do cheat in exams, ultimately, there's only one person you're cheating. The head of the exam board. Fuck him. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, one more thing to get. I fondly remember the ride on the yellow school bus, but I don't see yellow school buses, and I don't know how British children are getting to school. Are they digging tunnels? Are they hitchhiking? <laughs> I have no idea how your kids get to school. Get the bus. Yeah, just get the bus. I used to walk home sometimes as well, and then I'd stop off at the special bin. There was a bin that I used to stop at and make sure I had a bit of rubbish to throw in it a for special bin. Sorry, what was the special bin where you had to have rubbish to put in the bin? Yeah, right, so on my walk home from, from school, mm. There was this bin, and me and my mate just decided that it was our special bin because, like, good things would happen after you put a little bit of rubbish in that bin. Mm. So we'd always make sure we had something to throw in there, and then we'd be like, <laughs> and then run home. Why was it a magic bin? It was just a magic bin, OK? I was a child. <laughs> I used to put things in, and then something good would happen. What good thing happened? I'd find 50p, and then I could go and buy a curly whirly and some other sweets. <laughs> 40p it was for the bus when I first started going to school. Mm. But there was a devil bus, basically. <laughs> there was a bus I got and then there was a special bus for the rough school nearby. Sorry, you weren't in the rough school? <laughs> no, 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 this one was even worse. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't allowed to get on buses. They had to have one just for them. Did they have police at the doors? Because they yeah. used to do that at my so school. The police... Like, the police would stop you from what? getting on the bus. Yeah. yeah. I once got pelted with conkers, but I'm talking like 300 conkers. <laughs> <laughs> it was the start of Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Once they ripped out the back seat and threw it at me. <laughs> <laughs> it was awful. Awful. Yeah. Everyone used to egg the school bus because you know that the bus driver can't chase you, but then you egg a car and you're like fucked because <laughs> he'll chase you till he catches you. <laughs> so while you guys are dealing with violence and police and magic bins on public transport, yeah. Yeah. what happens when you put a film on like Forrest Gump and you see a yellow school bus? Are you confused? Well, no, I, I understand that they have them over yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same as like when I see a man with abs. I know it exists. Yeah. <laughs> it's not anything that I'll have a part of. <laughs> uh, well, I can tell you the school bus is not up there, but the back of the bus was always the cool bit. I never really understood what Rosa Parks was so annoyed about. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, one more thing to get. Come on, fingers on buzzers. Is it school break time? Yeah, like the playground. Good. Did you have the same thing? Did you sort of go crazy in break time? We had fun, but you could play anything you wanted back then. Blind man's bluff, which I guess is based on benefit fraud. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do, um, like, Tunnel of Death. <laughs> Basically, you're queuing up to get in your classes, and there'd be kids on one side, kids on the other, and if it was all full and someone was walking down, someone would scream, Tunnel of death! And that person had the shit kicked out of them. No. <laughs> <laughs> we had a game that we devised. It was... <laughs> it was cool. <laughs> when the Spice Girls were at their zenith... Yeah. And it of course, tickled us... Of course. <laughs> it really tickled us to sing Spice Girls songs in an RP accent. <laughs> and we would do it interminably. Can we, can we have an example? If you want to be my lover, you've got to get with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what... Uh, yeah. <laughs> that is what Posh Spice would sound like... <laughs> ..if she was posh <laughs> or could sing. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, one of the most fun things you can do in the playground is play with bollards. Take a look at this clip. Come on. Give We're running out of memory. I hope so. I'm getting so many videos here, but nothing. Let's see it again, let's see it again. Oh, 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 oh it's full force. Poor Michael McIntyre. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me, that's why my voice is this high. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is quite dark, but it's quite funny. <laughs> there was someone had some scissors in the classroom, and someone had scissors. They went, I'll pass him scissors, so they broke through him at him. <laughs> went into his head. <laughs> oh, it was all fine right at the end of it, but it went in, like, in, in there and a little bit, and it was bleeding and stuff like that. And he went, Oh, God, and it like, fell down on the floor like that. And the teacher went, Just don't move, I'll go and get some. And he's laying the blood over his head, and they're like, Oh, God, I can't move. And then someone in the class went and got a bit of chalk and just drew a chalk line around. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
When my mum was at school, her friend Your dad said was her. fucking her? <laughs> <laughs> Her friend said to her, I want to be off games for the whole term. Will you break my arm? I promise I won't tell. And so she put him in a half Nelson and did it. Oh. She's oh. very strong, my mum. She's diminutive, but tough. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I might be posh, Tom, because our families are not that different. My best break and my last good break of all time, <laughs> before I became even more deeply unpopular, was the day I found out that a man dumped a really popular girl in my school for my mom and started dating my mom. And that man's my stepdad now, so it's fine. But at the time, it ruined my life. And it was such a big scandal in a small school in a How small town. How old was town. your mom? How old was your stepdad? She was 40, he was 20, I was 15. And the girl he broke up with was like 17, and she was popular and I wasn't. And that girl was at your school? Yes. Wow, did... you are trash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We didn't have mobile phones, but I knew this guy worked with my mom. So I took a quarter from my friend Lori, and the whole school was abuzz with this news. And I was like, I'm going to call him, because I knew my mom's work number. And I marched down the hall. It was just like a film, like, dun, 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 dun. and as I marched down, people gathered with me, and it became this procession of people being like, we're going to go to the payphones, and we're going to call this guy. And I had this big crowd, and I went to the payphone, and put the quarter in, and I rang, and I called the work, and I said, hello, can I please speak to Abe? His name's Abe the Babe. <laughs> and then it transferred to him, and he was like, hello? And I was like, you're Fucked. Yeah, by your mum. <laughs> <laughs> and then we spent a year trying to ruin his life. It didn't work. He still kept fucking my mom. And then I gave up. And now it must be a great lie. Yeah, she is. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I got my finger chopped off at primary school. I was trying to escape, and do you know when you got the metal fences <laughs> like that? And I got my finger like <gasps> cut off. But they sewn it on. I'm pretty pissed off because they've like put it on sideways. It's like I'm trying to point over there, but he's defo yeah. going over there. <laughs> <laughs> but he's dead strong, look. Oh, <laughs> <isn't> it? <laughs> like a gold bionic finger. Yeah, love it. yeah, but it was. Oh my god, you're wasted as a gamer. Oh, it's <laughs> incredible. Oh, you can do a lot with that. <laughs> <laughs> My leg in school on the playground. I had to be in a wheelchair for like a, a year because it was year? so bad. Yeah. Wow. How'd you break it? I, I was like, there was some kid who was crying, and I was like, I'm gonna go and see what's wrong with them. And I was going down the bars on a climbing frame, and I slipped, and my leg went between the bars and broke. Ooh. And um, one of the little kids as well was like, you know, when something like someone hurts himself, everyone runs round at school. So all the kids came running around. One kid jumped over me to get a better look and kicked the broken leg. No. <laughs> oh, what a legend. <laughs> That painful. Oh, he is now. <laughs> uh, let's have a look and see if the playground is up there. Yes, of course. We all remember the playground. <laughs> Luckily, in the playground, I knew how to make the bullies laugh by tickling their balls with my tongue. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, Rob Steam have one point, Catherine Steam have two points. Yay. That's it for part two. See you after the break. Way out, ten cats. Our next round is pick of the polls. Rob Paisley, Josh, what do you like the look of? The suitcases. Uh, you chosen the suitcases. Here's your related Ooh. question. Most people find going on holiday stressful. True or false? True. The one thing that proper grinds my gears about going on holiday is you get to the hotel and your room's not ready. Like that shit pisses me off. Like I get that other people stay here too. Yeah. But you know I'm coming, yeah. so please let the room be wet. Like, I don't want to sit there in my sweaty plain clothes in the baking heat, like, sipping a mimosa. I'm like, I don't want this. Yeah. I want to strip down. Well, you seem very stressed. Do you know what you need? <laughs> 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 if they kept me waiting like that, I would put my sweaty plain pum straight in their pool and be like, your problem now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the thing is, I get quite stressed at the airport. What annoys me the most is when you try and buy something and they go, oh, you got a boarding card? But, but why do I need my boarding pass for this? Do you think, do you, of course I'm flying somewhere. Do you think I've gone through security <laughs> for an hour to buy a packet of minstrels for eight quid? <laughs> That's what really scared me about Heathrow. I was going to Ireland. I used to go all the time when my Nana was still alive. 
she like really stretched that out like 10 years she pretended to die <laughs> and, <laughs> and you'd go closer and closer and closer to the Ryanair gate and then there was an off license right by the door to go on the plane and there had a big sign there that was like no ID no sale and I was like no ID how'd you get in the fucking airport how'd you get to the gate <laughs> what about you uh, Josh you going away on holiday much well the only holidays I've been on in the last 10 years have been on a badge so badge. Uh, but, <laughs> how many days is it badge <laughs> uh, are you, well, in, could be you like... in Peaky Blinders <laughs> I told you I'm dangerous. I am. Um... <laughs> what are you on? Are you a narrow boat? A narrow boat. A badge. And there's a lot of stress, you know, these driving the badge. Yeah, just say what you're on. Badge! <laughs> Cooking in the badge, boxer size on a badge, yeah. aggressive. Stop beef. saying badge! badge. <laughs> badge. So how come you went on a Badge, Oliver. <laughs> when I was at uni, some guy who went uni with, he had a badge in Reading. <laughs> so we went there. To be honest, this is quite sad. For years, <laughs> it was the only time I've been to London when I was stuck in the, um, the Megabus bus station waiting to go to Reading on my badge. That was my <laughs> whole experience of London f till about three years ago. Aww. It was great, though. They had a Greg's. Yeah. So... <laughs> Tom, do you travel much? I used to interminably when I was in the theatre. Because mm. I'm a nurse wife. Thespian, you see. Yes. So I went all over the UK, up and down, again and again, and around and around in awful digs. My dad said I was living off the smell of an oily rag. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a divine remark. <laughs> <laughs> the same oily rag you used on your mum. <laughs> <laughs> Kiri, what do you find stressful about travel over here? Oh, last girl's holiday I went on was a, a nightmare. Really horrible. I, I lacerated my hand on, on a rock plane in the sea, and then we went to get it sorted out, um, and it needed uh, four stitches, but it was, like, 200 euro, and I didn't have that. I'd spent it on the holiday. Um, so I just bought some iodine and poured it in the wound and then sellotaped it up. <laughs> and then we booked to go to a water park the next day, and I couldn't get it wet because I had it sellotaped and I had to keep it straight. So all the photos of me are basically doing <laughs> a full-on Nazi salute on all the rides. <laughs> trying to keep my wound dry. <laughs> now, one way to make holidays less stressful is to ensure you get to the gate at the airport on time. I've got a time-saving invention here. Uh, would you like to have a go? It's a suitcase, <gasps> and it's like a oh. ride-on suitcase. Rob, do you want to go? Yes. I've never wanted to do anything more in my life. <laughs> OK, so you can, you can probably figure it out. It's, um... Yeah, and it's, oh, it comes out there. And then you can pull up the handle. Oh, hello. Pull up that. What? It's quite powerful. Yeah. Right. Here we go. So you're... <laughs> Rob, the flight leaves in two minutes. It's over there. You're all the way over there. Not a problem. It's a busy airport, Rob. You're never going to make it, Not mate. a problem, mate. I've got a speedy ball in. <laughs> Here we go. Is that on? Mate, honestly, the flight is going. Oh, no! I'll come back around. <laughs> I've never seen him this happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best thing I've ever had. <laughs> I'm having this now, Jim. I don't know. That's uh, good. I mean, I... it don't corner well. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Darling, that hump, you practically flew. You yeah, did. it turned I mean, into you... chitty before my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be brave with it. Flying through Gatwick on that. <laughs> kids walking 100 metres behind. <laughs> See that, kids? <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's get some answers. Most people find going on holiday stressful. What do you think, Rob? I'd oh. say, yeah. Like, OK, what do you think? I'll say, yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying false. What are you going to go with, Catherine? We think it's absolutely true. Yes. Mm. Holiday. OK, well, I can tell you the answer is false. Oh. But 39% of you. people do oh, find going on holiday too. stressful. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> when I went on holiday, I was worried that my elderly nana wouldn't be there when I got back. I needn't have worried. I rushed back from the airport, and there she was, lying at the bottom of the stairs just where I left her. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Catherine, seeing what you like the look of. I think I like the face paint. Yeah. Uh, OK. Yes. Well, you've picked the face painting, which means it's time for our face painting challenge. Rob and Josh, Catherine and Tom, put on your smocks. Come and join me in the middle. Whoa. Come on. <laughs> OK. 
Sure. Okay, so it's a face painting challenge. No. The rules of the game are simple. Rob, uh, you'll paint Josh's face. Catherine, you're going to paint Tom's face. Uh, the person who does it best wins an extra point for their team. Could be simpler, except Catherine and Rob will both be wearing special goggles so everything will look upside down. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Catherine, you'll be painting Tom to look like a tiger. And Rob, you'll be painting Josh to look like a clown. OK. OK, so th those are the goggles. If you right, pop, OK, pop those put it on. on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is easy. Oh, God. These goggles? Right. OK. Oh, I don't like it. Oh, it's horrible. I might throw up. I, can't, I don't know if I can do it. My cot looks massive in okay, there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Can we do it? If I throw up, I throw up. <laughs> All right, your time starts now. Okay. Oh, fuck. Done. Go, Catherine. Oh. I mean, I can't even get the, the fucking okay. brushes. <laughs> okay. Jeez, you have I want to do well. Okay. White base, Rob. White base Wait. for the clown. I was going to do his nose, actually. <laughs> All right. Start with you the start nose. getting involved. <laughs> sure, so oh, just red. Is... It's awful. I, I can't even get to it. It's fucking mental. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at the speed he's working with. <laughs> Is Rob going fast? He's, oh, he's not oh. even started. <laughs> <laughs> it's so awful! I'll do that and you move your phone. It's so awful! <laughs> Try a different brush. OK. You know, I was going to say this is my ass. Oh, OK, mom. sorry. <laughs> so it's in my mouth. OK, right. wait, close oh, your eyes a bit. Oh, oh I feel sick. Well, I, I, it's bothering me that I can't be good. OK. I don't like hurting people. It feels very symmetrical, that's fine. What are you doing? Keep your hands still. I'm so sorry, Josh. Darling. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Why are you painting his shirt? I can't, I can't! <laughs> oh, wait, because... Oh. What are you? I keep talking out of my head. I feel oh, absolutely... I, I don't know where anything is. <laughs> Well, Why are you slurring your words? Because I'm... <laughs> mate, I don't know what's going on here. You don't know about it. Oh, here we go. That we're back in the game now. Divine. And I think I think you've got perfect symmetry oh. until, until the spots went on. Oh, oh, it's that one! <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. OK, Tom, I can't... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna right? try to put some black on. Why is that on? My head. <laughs> <laughs> they call it. Oh, fuck off. Sorry. I can't do it. Where are you, Tony? I can't do it. I feel like I've wanked off an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your time's up. Ooh. You can take off your glasses. Oh, it's so horrible. It is horrible. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Agree, Catherine is the winner of that challenge. Yeah! That's it for this part. Right, we'll see you after the break. So the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here's your first one. The scariest thing about the future. Is it the diminishing numbers of giraffes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that good thing one. you buzzed in with that early, because I think they were thinking it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just think they're so beautiful. Zarafa is Arabic, meaning charming. And I think they are so charming. They are too big, though, giraffes, aren't they? <laughs> I love them. There's, there's food on the ground. No, but the high Because they always do all right. The high leaves... Are... Infinitely moist. <laughs> okay, the scariest thing about the future. Okay, I can tell you a little bit of a spoiler not fucking giraffes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be scary trying to fuck a giraffe, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a two step ladder job, that, isn't it? <laughs> One for each leg, off we go. <laughs> well, you're giving this a lot of thought. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I'll do a job of doing probably. If you want to fuck a giraffe, Jim, I'll think about it. <laughs> OK, scary thing about the future. Well, what do you think, Josh? What do you worry about? Uh, like, everyone having to go vegan, cos I was a vegan for a couple of years, for, like, three years, but then I was bitten by a dog and I thought, do you know what, fuck them, they're not even great. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so... <laughs> so... <laughs> I think 
they'll make everyone go vegan eventually. I think it'll be like forced. And if you want meat, you're gonna have to go to like a meat speakeasy. I agree. I yeah. think they're gonna make like cheese and all fun stuff illegal, and then you're gonna have to like find it some other way. And yeah. You'll call a guy and he'll bring you. Oh, I can't have a cheese dealer. No, you're gonna have to. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. You ever did a pint of glass of wine? I put a call in for a bit of brie. Yeah. <laughs> you got a guy for brie. <laughs> Yeah, they'll be cutting it out like Dairy Lee, <laughs> wouldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Can't even pure grey brie. <laughs> The scariest thing about the future, what, what do you think, what do you worry about? I am worried about robots taking over because I already don't trust Alexa, she's always listening, and I don't like Siri, all these things are listening to you and learning about you, and I feel like they're just gonna get us. Like, anything happens with technology, the first thing we do, we're like, how can we fuck it? They're going to be so busy being filled in from every angle by your weird cousin. They haven't got time to take over the world. <laughs> They're too busy, like, can I get the jizz out of my nuts and bolts, please? <laughs> <laughs> the scariest thing about the future, what do, you, what do you worry about, Catherine? We're all getting older along with HD technology, and that's really hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was fine being older in the days of black and white, you know, films. Oh, very gosh. Nice. Greta Garbo yeah. becoming a recluse because she didn't like seeing her wrinkles in the day is where she could put Vaseline on the lens, for yeah. heaven's sake. Imagine her now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what scares me about the future? We all end up in Panto. <laughs> well, I mean, you're worried about Panto. I'm worried about the jungle. It's national service for us. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you've got to wait. Imagine you in the <laughs> What? A little pair of shorts and a fleece. <laughs> <laughs> a little <out> on. <laughs> Jungles are right, but Panto, when you're, you're stuck in Stoke with Ainsley Harriet for three months. <laughs> I had the most awful pantomime experience. I was playing Fireina, the evil fairy in Sleeping Beauty, and there was a group of school children in the front row, and I said something particularly evil to the prince, and this six-year-old boy went, Oh, fuck off and die! <laughs> <laughs> Keep a straight face for the remainder of the ah. <laughs> Okay, scariest thing about the future. Uh, Catherine, you were pretty close. Oh, age-related? Yeah. Getting old. It's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the scariest thing about the future is getting old. I'm not worried about getting older, although I suspect I'll start thinking more about it when I turn 30. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck you. <laughs> All right, final question. Coolest job. Oh, I know what mine would be. What Go is on. it? I'd be the leading lady in a Jerry Herman musical because they <laughs> always get a staircase and they nearly always sing on it. Yeah. Yes, that's the right answer. <laughs> that's the right answer. Yes. Coolest job. What do, what do you think would be the coolest job? Coolest job would be hosting a place in the sun. You just get to go on holiday, show a couple houses. I don't know anything them. about selling a house, but I think but, I'd yeah. just wing it and it'd be OK. It's normally sort of like, you know, two miserable people from somewhere cold. Yeah. And they go, There's a pool yeah. and it's sunny. They go, I love Ooh. it. <laughs> Kerry, coolest job, what do you think? Um, being Lizzo, that's a good job, isn't it? Ooh, yeah. I absolutely love to do that whap a flute out twerk. <laughs> I could do that. I wouldn't want to be a pop star. I'd want to be a pop star's... Entourage, like imagine being Ariana Grande's hairstylist. That's like six grand a day. That bitch is doing ponytails, nothing else. <laughs> 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 you, you, think, you think that's cool? Like, you know, imagine the person that was like Whitney Houston's assistant thought it was a really cool job until she had to yeah. throw coke up her ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'd do that. <laughs> Actually, you're thinking about it, not a bad job, is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the coolest job. I think I'd like to be a guidance counselor. And then I'd tell every child that they were going to be a UK grime artist and then wait 20 years to see them on a chat show, being like, Mrs. Ryan is the only one who ever believed in me. <laughs> and it'd be all worth it. OK, <laughs> coolest job. What do you think? What's the coolest job? What would you like? Well, I thought I had it. I used to work for Uber Eats cycling around Manchester. You know how to cycle, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like like that. a yeah. Like a dinosaur yeah. boxing. Yeah. So, <laughs> 
So, yeah, I was cycling around Manchester. I was, de like, dead excited because I was self-employed. And... Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, like, it was quite bad because when you work for Uber Eats, you have to follow, like, a map. And it took me onto a place called the Mancunian Way, which is a dual carriageway. It's oh. basically a mini motorway on top of a massive bridge with no pavement and no escape. Oh, no. So I was, like, cycling along there. <laughs> All these cars got really angry. Everyone started beeping. So I did what anyone would do and started crying. And, <laughs> and then, because I was so, like, flustered, I'd just been so close to death, I ate the pizza I was supposed to be <laughs> delivering. And then I just deleted the Uber Eats app. And that's how I became a full-time stand-up <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so much you might, you, you're more likely to get recruited to do this job than to go for the job. Oh, spy. That's exactly right. <gasps> spy is the coolest job. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, the coolest job is being a spy. The best thing about being a spy is that you get to die of Novichok, which is what's going to kill Eamon Holmes. Novichok, and then Novichok, and then Novichok. <laughs> Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, and I can tell you, Catherine's team are tonight's winners! <laughs> Thanks to all our panelists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night.